Okay, we're going to talk about turning to God today. Uh, just a few people here today because we are busy, you know, broadcasting. Um, John? Okay, it's working. It's working, it's not working. It's working, it's not working. Come here. Right. So this message, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about the times that the world is going through now, that, you know, it's trying times, it's difficult times. And I must say, you know, like, you know, like this time that, that the world is going through now, it can still be worse. You know, there's worse things that can happen. And this time is, is just a reminder of the things that are going to come. And there's going to come a day when, when two will be on a bed, one will be taken, one will be left behind. And if this is causing so much problems, imagine what the world will go through if there's a rapture that takes place. And, and we need to get reminded, John, it's not working. Uh, uh, is there a delay now? All right. So I'm going to jump straight into the message because this message, this first part here is to, to uh, reach out also to those people that are going through this time that doesn't have hope, that doesn't have faith, that is just going through the turmoil and they, they don't understand what's going on and they need power and peace and I want to let you know that we have, we know the way and and if you stick to these messages, you're going to find a way not only to, to uh, survive in this time, but also to be a conqueror in this time, because God wants you to be victorious. And this time that the world is going through, you need all the help that you can get. I'm thinking about people that, that have businesses also, that, that have to pay a lot of things every month. And the income, especially if you think about the shopping center, people paying you know, huge amounts every month to just have a shop in the, in, the, in the center. And there's contracts and things. You can't just get out of your contract. And, you know, and everyone is stopping and this, and it's a good thing that, you know, that, we, that people are trying to contain or to stop the virus from, from spreading. But, you know, those people still have to pay their bills every month. And so, you know, I'm thinking about people that, that are, that are, that know the numbers and they, they think the numbers are not going to work out. And, and I need to, to, for you to listen to this message so that you can find power because the Holy Spirit is supernatural and you need supernatural power to stand in a time like this. You know? And we know the way to the power, to God. And we know that His name is Jesus and that He wants to you know, help you. So this message is going to go out. Please free, feel free to share and to like this message and to spread it through the world so that it can do its work. All right, so I'm going to start off. It's, it's 1 Timothy 2 verse 3. It says, uh, this is a good and acceptable and pleasing uh, thing in the sight of God our Savior who, who, Savior, who wishes all people to be saved, who wishes for all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the divine truth. Right, God wants everyone to be saved. You must understand, God doesn't want anyone to live in fear, to go astray and to get sick. And God wants to save every person. God wants to save every person. It's its heart. It's not after people that are, that are missing. He wants us all to come to Him. And it's going to take a, a, a step in faith. But let me explain. I'm just going to carry on with this. Uh, John 3 verse 3 it says Jesus answered him I assure you and most solemnly I say to you unless a person is born again right born again uh, he cannot and uh, cannot see and experience the kingdom of God first of all the kingdom of God is, is not a place it's a way of living the kingdom of God is, is the way that God wants a, a person to live the kingdom of God can come in your life. Kingdom of God wants to come in your life. The kingdom of God contains God's power, God's will for your life. And a person that does is not reborn cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's a way of living. 
And so you need to respond to, to God calling because God is actually taking the first step. He has given His Son to die in your place. And I see people also thinking and they, they, they don't understand you know, what they're going through they, because you think that God is just going to do everything. But you need to respond to God because the Spirit cannot come in unless you open up for Him. And you need to respond by faith and say, look, yeah, I believe that He died for me on the cross, that I'm worth dying for. You need to understand that you are worth dying for on a cross. And there's nothing that you can do today that can make God love you more than what He's already loved you. That is a done deal. You cannot go back and help Jesus to carry the cross. It's too late. You need to just get this as a gift. And you need to receive it as a gift. And this is what the Bible is talking about, reborn, being reborn. The Spirit of God wants to go and dwell inside of you. And you need to open up. And there's even some of the traditional believing people that are not reborn. Because going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Standing in a garage doesn't make you a cop. You need to get a personal relationship with God. You need to open your heart. And you need to receive the Spirit of God. And today I want to help you to do that. Because if you haven't got the Holy Spirit, you haven't got power. And you are just a natural person that are trying to cope in this world. If you have the Holy Spirit, then you have supernatural power on your side that is working for you and with you. Right, so you must get this today because this is going to put you in another place. And this is a time for you to respond today. The Bible says when it's warm, you need to respond because... That when He's calling you, you feel the unction, you feel the pull of the Holy Spirit, you need to respond to that pull because it might not come tomorrow again. You know, this might be the last time that God actually you know, puts this little fire in you that says, I need to do this. And so you need to respond today. You don't have to tell anyone anything. You, don't, you, you do it for yourself. You do it for yourself. And there's no... You know, I have to change first and then God will love me. If that was true, then Jesus didn't have to go to the cross. If we could make it on our own power and own ability and through obedience, then Jesus didn't have to go to the cross. Jesus went to the cross because nobody could uh, make it into the kingdom of God by their works. So you need to understand this. Just believe me, there's scripture for this. But you're going to have to respond by faith and say, God, I need you in my life. I need for you to take over in my life. I want to surrender to you. I've been driving this car all my life. I've been making so many mistakes. If I look to, to what I achieved with my own power, I still don't understand you know, what I went through and how I did this, but I want you now to come and sit in the driver's seat. I want you to take over in my life. That's what you need to do. You need to see in your in your imagination, how you get out from the driver's seat and how you go to the passenger seat or the, the rear seat. You need to get into that position because if you make that shift, God is going to take the controls, pick it up, and make no mistake, you are exactly now, or you are in a place that God knows exactly where you are. And, and God is not lost with you. He's not surprised with where you are. Your life and the things you went through and the things you grew up in, you know, a lot of those things caused you to get to where you are now. But God knows exactly how to save people. And you can be, you know, the baddest person in this world. Even Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the, of the, two of the New Testament, also, you know, he, he persecuted the church. He killed Christians. He helped, you know, killing Christians. Uh, Christians and and God used that man to write almost two thirds of the New Testament. So you need to see that there's nothing that you can do that He will not forgive you of. You know, there's nothing that you can uh, or uh, could have done that He can't forgive you of. And you can come like you are. You don't you don't achieve this. You don't qualify for this. God just did it for you, and you need to receive it as a gift. So you need to come like you are. Because that's the way God wants it to be. He is God and you are not. And He did this for you. You know, think about this. Your value equals 
worth dying for. And the Bible says, I'll get to the scriptures, but the Bible says that he knew your name before he even made this world. Think about that. Even if your parents didn't plan you, God planned you. That's a reality. Your fingerprint doesn't match anyone in this world. And I just feel that the love of God is just, you know, going through this now. This message here, the love of God wants to reach you. The love of God wants to touch you and it wants to pull you close and say, come to me. Come to me, you that carry heavy things and weights. Come to me, I want to give you rest. Rest is what you need in a time like this. Peace is what you need in a time like this. Supernatural peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding is what you need to get. Because otherwise you will lose your life. You will lose everything. You will lose. And you need to get to a place of peace. And so God wants you to have that peace. And the Bible says nobody will enter the kingdom of God unless they are reborn. You know, the spirit became dead when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. That's the fall of man. That's what happened. That is what the Bible said, that you will surely die. That is the spirit part of the man that died. And when you get reborn, your spirit gets uh, quickened and your spirit gets alive or reborn again. And then you are now looking at stuff through the spirit, in the spirit. You need to get alive in your spirit. You need to get your spirit to live. And so you need to respond and say, come and stay in me, Lord. Maybe we should pray at this time now and just ask God to come and take over in my life. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you, that you were considering me and that you made that choice to give your son to die in my place. That I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve this. I think about all the things I've done. I think about all this and I say, forgive me, God. Because I was living my life on my own. I was living my life away from you. But today I make a choice. I say, God, come and take over in my life. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot stand this anymore. My life is horrible. I hate myself. I, I can't do this anymore. Some even say I want to just end it, end the trouble, and end all this thing that's happening to me. And God is saying, just come to me. Come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. I am your help. I am your source. I am your power that you are looking for. I am the one that will carry you. Think about those, those uh, footsteps on the beach, one picture that people are sharing. And God wants to carry you and he wants to lift you up. And God will put his spirit into you now. As you respond, he says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. That is what needs to happen. You need to open up. God has already given his son. He's already done this on the cross. It's, he took the first step. You need to respond to that step now. You need to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you closes the deal. Thank you says, I believe it and I receive it. Thank you that, you, that I'm worth dying for. Thank you that you have a plan for me and also a good plan for me. And I'm going to change this now. Today this changes. I'm not going to do this by myself anymore. I need your power. Come and live in me. Stay in me. Strengthen me. Fill me with your spirit. Make your home in me. Take over in my life. There's my business. There's my wife. There's my family. There's everything that I'm responsible for. I cast all my care onto you because you care for me. So I pray, Father, today that you will lift off heavy burdens and things pushing down on these people in Jesus' name, that you will put your yoke that is soft and light on our shoulders, that we will be strengthened, God, and that you will just hold us, hold us through this time. Also, hold us, encourage us, empower us. Help us to forgive those who sin against us. Help us to let go and let God. Help us to, to get rid of the anger and the pain that sits in the hearts in Jesus' name so that we will be set free. That's what I ask in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So I'm just going to carry on. Um, 
You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 8, what, uh, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, right, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's what he says. You need to confess this with your mouth and believe it in your heart. You need to open your mouth. You need to say, God, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe that you died. You sent your son to die for me in my place. I believe it. I receive it. I thank you for it. I need your spirit. I need your power in my life. You need to say that. Even if, while I'm saying that, you need to say that with your mouth. Because with your heart you believe, with your mouth you confess and you will be saved. The saved, again, sozo. In the Greek, it means not only to be saved, but also to be delivered, to be healed, to be restored, to be set free. You need all these things. You need deliverance from the things that are coming. You need deliverance. You need favor. You need to be saved. So respond. Right? That's verse 10. It says, For with the heart a person believes, Resulting in his justification. Your faith will make you right with God. That's how it works. Faith in Jesus and the blood of the Lamb will make you right with God. Being right with God is the highest uh, goal that all of us must have. Is to be right with God. You stand in the heavens before God, before the judge, and you are right with God. That's what you need. Right? So your faith in the blood of Jesus that saved your soul will make you right. Okay. And with the mouth, he acknowledges and confesses, resulting in confirming salvation. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed you in your, in your, in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I separated you and I have appointed you as prophet of the nations. Before I formed the... Uh, before I... Before this world started, I formed you in your mother's... Or before I even made this world, I was thinking about you. So the Bible also says. You must know this, that God knew you before you even made this world. It's an awesome promise. It's an awesome uh, thing to think about. That, that I live in a time like this, in the exact time like this, for a purpose, for a reason. I've been created to be born in this time. And God has a plan with me. It's a beautiful thing if you can discover that God loves you and He's got a plan with you and that He made you. People didn't make you. God made you. God formed you. And when you were born, He said, it's good. It's good. So you might not like yourself too much, but God says it's good. So you need to tap into what God says. You are an individual. You are not the same as everyone else. You you made to stand out, not to blend in. Right? You're not supposed to be like anyone else. You have an identity. Maybe your parents told you that you must be like this or be like that. Untrue. You are an individual. You have special gifts and talents and purposes that only you can do. And you need to find them and you need to discover where you, where you really you know, are strong. Luke 17 verse 30, it says, It will be just the same on the day of the Son of Man. When he is revealed. On that day, <clears throat> whoever is on the housetop uh, with his belongings in the house must not come down to take them out. And likewise, whoever is in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife when she looked back. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Right? I just want to put emphasis on, on the first part of the scripture. You need to get the stuff in the right place. The stuff must not be in the wrong place. God must be in the right place in your life. So a lot of us are looking at the stuff and the money and the things like that to help us. God says, I want to be God for you. You need to put your eyes on me. He says when, when, when these sort of things happen, the stuff must be in the right place already. So some of you have to make shifts now and say, this stuff here is not what I'm trusting in. 
this that I'm looking at is not going to help me. I need the Spirit of God, the power of God to help me. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to tip it all around and put this, the Spirit of God above. I'm going to put the things in the right place. Because he says, on that day, whoever is on the housetop with his belongings in the house must not come down to take them. Don't run and grab your stuff, says the Bible. Put the stuff in the right place now. It's not the stuff that you need. It's the word of God that you need, right? It's to be, be able to trust in what God says. That is a, the, when the, the virus comes, when the fear comes, God says, run to my word and grab my word. Keep your eyes on me. Don't go back and look at your belongings and stuff like that. Don't look at that stuff. Look at me, take my word and trust me that I will not allow for you to be tested above what you can handle. It's a very important scripture in a time like this. That I will not go through what I cannot handle. God will not allow that to happen in my life. Maybe you think, oh, well, that's a bit you know, tough to say. No, that's the Bible. The Word of God. You need to also understand that the Bible is the Word of God. Right? It, it says this heaven and this earth will pass away, but my Word will stay the same. It will not change. It cannot change. It stays the same. <laughs> All right? It's, it's rock solid. It's the rock that we build our house on. It's solid. And with your walk with God, you will establish that, that the peace of God will become greater than fear. When you walk with God, fear cannot take that place anymore because peace is taking that place all the time. You reassure you see, but you need to walk while, while there's plenty and while there's nothing. You need to do this all the time. Put the stuff in the right place all the time. Because in a time like this, it really counts that it's not in the wrong place. Because if you're going to look with your natural eyes, you're going to become very afraid. If you're going to look at the clouds, the storms, the winds that are coming up. All the stories, all the you know newspaper uh, articles, all the things... Talking, God says, if you're going to look there, you are going to fall and you're going to even sink, you know. But keep your eyes on me and you will be able to walk on water. We're entering a time or we are in a time that you need to be able to walk on water. You need to understand that God will provide because he said so. Because he promises, right? And, he, and his word stays the same, right? It's yes and amen. So verse 34, I tell you, on that night, there will be two on one bed. One will be taken and another will be left. That's talking about rapture. You know, there wasn't a rapture now, but when the rapture comes, you think about what, what this, you know, what happened to the world now with this coronavirus. Imagine what the world will go through when there's a rapture. You know, how... How will it look? Everyone will be, what, looking for aliens or something? What happened to the people? All sorts of turmoil going on. And, and for you, you need to get on the first bus out of here. You know, there's going to be a bus leaving. And, and you're going to have to, by faith, the Bible says Jesus will come like a thief in the night. Almost like this thing that hit and struck the world now. Nobody expected it. It just came... And then you need to be ready when it comes. So I'm talking to people that are not that were not ready. So you're gonna, you know, understand that God will take you from where you are, start building you up, protect you, shield you, cover you, and help you to stand and go up. You know, God can fast forward stuff. But you need to see that that as this virus also comes, the rapture will come. This it will come quickly. And, and you need to be ready for when it comes. And this is like a warning because now there's still time to fix it. You know? But when the rapture comes, the Bible says those that want to come to God will have to pay with their life. It's not going to be possible to respond like you have the luxury today to respond. That time will be finished. And as you miss the first bus, you're going to have to say, I won't deny Jesus Christ. 
you can chop my head off, but I'm going to stand in faith. And that's going to be a hard time. So I want to be on the first bus. Please join me on the first bus. Right? <laughs> but the Bible says few that are, are those that are going in. And you can see, you know, that that is a problem. I think, you know, we must get the whole message. I'm going to carry on with the whole message about, you know, where to keep your, your, your um, you know, uh, lamp full to keep these things right because there's a lot of Christians that believe but they are lukewarm. They they don't have they don't show any threat to the devil. They don't show they don't even know that there's a spiritual fight going on. They don't even understand that there's a spiritual fight going on. Even though the Bible says Ephesians six that our fight is not flesh and blood. It's not a natural fight. It's a supernatural fight. Also I think second uh, Corinthians 10 it says verse 4 it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds you know there's a, a, a supernatural fight going on and fear is standing behind the coronavirus this this is just a name but the the, the one that is that is behind it is a spirit of fear that wants to paralyze and stop people. And, you know, it wants to control, contain people. And we need to rise up against that spirit that wants to do these things. And so you need to get your weapons up, uh, Church of God. Revelation 3 verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door, and I continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. I will have fellowship with him. And and he and he with me, we will have fellowship. He says, "I stand at the door and I knock. You have to open it. I won't open it because I already gave my son. You need to accept me. You see, it's it's your choice. It's your choice whether you're going to accept God or not. It's it's him knocking, you opening. Can he open the door? Yes, he can, but he doesn't want to." Because he doesn't want to take that part of you away, the choosing part. Because that is your faith part. That is your part that says, I want you in my life, God. You come in with permission, please. There's, God needs permission to take your life over. Even though he paid for you, he, he, you know, he's given us a free will to decide for ourselves. It's an awesome thing to know. All right? There it says, Revelation 3, verse 15, I know your deeds. You are neither cold or hot. I wish you were cold or hot, so that because you are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will vomit you out from my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and you have uh, prospered and growth, grown wealthy and have need or not, of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Right? You think that you are okay, but you are not okay. You are not okay. If you haven't got God, you, got, you, you have nothing. If you haven't got God, you are in trouble. Tell you now. Also got business. I know what I'm talking about. Without God, you can do nothing. You are a useless nobody. This is all Bible. Don't need to quote it. 1 Corinthians 13, without love you are a useless nobody. <laughs> without God you cannot fly. Without God you crawl around on this earth. The speed of a crawler is much slower than a person flying. Right? You need to get to the, the place where God wants you to be. Right. Alright, he says, I counsel you to buy gold from me that has been heated red hot and refined by fire so that you may become truly rich. He says, these things that you see here on the earth cannot give you what I can give you. You cannot purchase on this earth what God wants to give to you. The power that he gives to a person to be able to sleep and to be at peace is not you know, available in this world. You cannot buy this in this world. It's not available. God wants to give that to you. Riches, money, that stuff cannot get you the peace. That only God can give you. You need to respond to this today. 
I'm telling you the truth. I only gave my life to God for, at the age of 28. I know what I'm talking about. I know how it is without God, and I know how it is with God. I tell you now, without God, you are blind. You are walking, but you don't even see because the lights are not on. You are driving a car on potholes, on a road full of potholes without lights. That's what you are trying to do. And you don't even know if you are on the way. You are lost. <laughs> Let me tell you that. You don't know what's important. You don't know what to fight for. You don't know what to stand for. The world changes all the time. What the world wants changes all the time. They, they, they feel like this today and tomorrow they feel different. But the word of God stays the same. The morals of the Word of God stay the same, and they stand the same, and it's alive. The Word of God is alive, and it has a good plan for us. And if you follow it, you will have life. Right? Matthew 25. It says here in verse 1, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like the ten virgins, right? Who took their lamps and went to meet with the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. Foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. Don't care, right? Don't want to care about anything. Just want to relax, do nothing, you know, be careless. God says these are the, 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 the virgins that were foolish. And that's the church at the moment. There's some that are foolish and some that are wise. See, at the time like this, when the crisis hits, you, your lamp needs to be filled already. <coughs> you need to be strong already in your faith. Then you will be able to stand. That needs to happen. He says, when the bridegroom comes back, there's not going to be time for you to go find oil. It's too late. The, the, the oil should have been in the lamp already. Your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, should have been full of the Spirit of God already. There's no time to go find oil now. It's too late. You can't get revelations that fast. You need to get your revelations while it's still daytime. Because when night times come, it's, it's difficult. It's going to be gone. And you need to get this now before it, the real problems come. So respond now and, and get your revelations. You, you are behind. You, know, you need to get catch up now of, of what God says about you. Because... You know, I can get into self-image, all that stuff. You need to get your image that God wants for you to have right. How you see yourself will have a huge effect on where you end up in your life. Some of you have to change your friends, right? So sometimes we have to get to a place where, you know, where stuff has to go wrong, totally wrong, before we respond. You know, like we had these lights in our bathroom that were just old. They were old. They didn't work properly. So they, the connections are not right. So you have to touch the globe and then it works for four days. And then it goes off by itself. And then, you know, touch the globe. And then you turn the globe. You wiggle the globe. It stays on for another two days. Then you have to touch it again. And so you sort of cope because it's possible, Right? And the other day, both the lights in the bathroom were just out. I touch, I turn, I couldn't get them to work. And so I had to take, because I already bought the new light fittings, but I had to just take them and fit them, right? And I decided that this is the day that I'm going to do it today. And now there's no problem anymore. The lights are changed. But we, we coped like that for a long time. And in times like this, when the lights go out, when the things go down, it's a time to do something about it quickly. You know, and I, I don't know why we had to wait so long. Because all the time I had to spend to go turn the globe and touch the globe and all that was all lost. And it was all you know, frustration. And, and all the time in your face, this thing that is going wrong. You can't put the cover on because then you can't touch the globe. So the... the so, you live with this, but times like this, you have to make a change and say, I'm going to change those fittings now. I'm going to change this, this. I'm going to change this way of mind now. I'm tired of the results that I'm getting. 
I'm going to put new fittings on. I'm going to make a change now, right? And so sometimes, you know, you have to lose things to realize things. <laughs> so if I'm not going to do something about this now, there's going to be darkness. I need to do something now. And I pray that God will quicken you and, and get you to a place where you realize that stuff needs to change. You cannot live with this flat tire anymore. You cannot live with this life that's not working anymore. Right? It says James 2. This is going to stretch a little bit. James 2 verse 19. It says, you believe that God is one? Because this is one of the problems that we have in the church that most people believe. They say they believe. And so you can't touch them. They believe. James 2 verse 19. You believe that God is one? You do well to believe that. But the demons also believe that. And they shudder and bristle and, and they are full of terror and fear. Right? But are you willing to recognize you foolish, spiritually shallow person that faith without good works is useless? He says, you can say whatever you want to say. Yes, I'm a Christian. Give me a block to tick. I'll tick it now. It doesn't help. The devil also ticks the block he believes. But it doesn't help that he believes because he's doomed. But what about you? Are you going to put some action with your faith? Are you going to stay the same? Are you going to not do anything? Right? Are you not going to open your mouth and start declaring the word, the word of God? Are you going to not release your faith with actions? He says, a wise man is the one who knows my will and does my will. A foolish man just knows what to do. He doesn't do anything. So just to have knowledge on its own is not enough. You need to get knowledge and then change your ways. You need to say, look, I know this is wrong. I'm going to stop going to that other joint. Okay, you can't go to the joint anymore in any case. <laughs> but maybe this is a good time for you to say, maybe this happened for a reason, so I can stop going there now. <laughs> and so you need to get to the place where you say, look here, this is not good for me. I know it's not good for me. I'm going to put some action by my faith and I'm going to stop going there now because it's, I end up just in the same place all the time. Those people don't help me there. They are just making me more upset. I'm going to stop going to that party and to that and I'm going to change, you know, I'm going to change my friends. You know, you see the um, lot Lot joined Abraham, and just with association, he became also a very rich man. He associated with Abraham. He just went with him. So who are you going with? You know, if you go with people that, uh, that don't make it and that always, you know, down, always going down, get somebody that you join that is going up, right? Get the right friends. Some of the friends you have to let them go. Association, very important. So what you believe, as a man believes, so easy, right? So it's what you believe about yourself and your friends actually just represent, you know, those things. Right, I'm just going to do this last scripture, then I'm done. It says, Matthew 7 verse 24, So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man and sensible man who builds his house on the rock. He says, you must listen. The one who hears the word and acts on it. Just to know is not enough. He's a wise man that builds his house on the rock. The actions actually show. The fruits show the tree. Right? It's only when it's, there's apples on the tree that it's the apple tree. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house. Yet it did not fall. This is what it is now. The story of the virus that, 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 that hits the world. Your house built on the rock will stand because of your faith. So the faith stands. And I stand by faith. I don't walk by sight. I stand by faith. God will make a way. Whatever comes my way, I will be able to handle. The storms come. They hit against my faith. They cannot... They cannot move my faith. Because we are, you know, the church and it's built on a rock. It's built on a rock. On this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's what the Bible says. On this revelation, right? 
You are the Jesus, the, the Christ, the Messiah, said Peter. And Jesus said, on this rock, on this revelation, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. This, the, the storm will not prevail. This attack will not prevail. It will not move my house. Right? It will not move me because I'm built on the rock. You understand that? But it was action also. You know, sowing and putting seed in the ground like the kingdom of God teaches us. You know, doing something with your faith. Putting your faith into action that makes a difference. Right? And that's a wise man. That's what it says. And so we strive to become like a wise man because you want your house to stand. Marriage also. You build your marriage on the principles of God and the storms will come. There's going to come you know, winds and storms to the marriage, sicknesses, all sorts of things come. And then the marriage is built on the rock. That storm cannot take it away because it's a covenant. I will not leave you. I promise before God that I will stay with you. you know, and it's built on the rock, on the God's principles. We, we, we go through the list. What must a man do? What must a woman do in the kingdom of God marriage? And we, we follow that. We do that. And the and storms will not you know, get hold of that house. All right. Now he says, um, and everyone, verse 26, and anyone, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish, stupid man. Stupid. <laughs> stupid man who builds his house on the sand. See, it's no foundation. The word of God is your foundation. It's what I stand on. It's what I build on. It's where I go to. It's my go to. It's my start. It's my beginning. It's where it's where I build. It's everything that I do, I build on the word of God. I don't I don't go on what what the news say. I don't go on what people say. I go on what God says. It's not on the sand. The world's principles, the world's way of doing things is the sand. Right? Half the people are divorced. 50% of the people are divorced. The world will say it's just as normal to be divorced as to be married. The world will say your mother didn't make it, so you don't have to make it. You can also divorce. But the Bible says, I hate divorce. So if you build on that principle, <laughs> it cannot move. You say, no, 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 I believe the word of God. I don't believe what I see. I believe in what I cannot see. I believe in the trust and on the word of God that he will help us. He will pull us through. He will strengthen us. And I forgive my wife because it's a godly principle. Right? I take my hands off this woman's throat. Remember? <laughs> Remember? And so I let her go and I let God. You are the judge. You check. I think there's something wrong with this woman. But you check, Father. Right? Press the reset. <laughs> and the rain fell and the floods and the, and the torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And it fell. Right? And great and complete was its fall. Because not built on the rock. So are you building your house? Are you building your life on the rock? On the word of God? That is why you are afraid, because there's no foundation. It's like a ship on the sea, getting tossed around with the winds and the waves. And wherever the pressure goes, the, you know, the ship goes. You need to get an anchor for your soul, which is the covenant of God. You need to get your, yourself anchored on the Word of God. I'm going nowhere. I'm standing on, on the Word of God. I'm in faith for His promises are yes and amen, and they will come to pass. The storms can come, but I've got an anchor. I'm anchored in in God, and I'm not going to let this. This is not going to. This is coming to pass. It's not coming to stay. It's coming to pass. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. This virus shall pass. But in this time now, God wants to also reach out to people and say, "Come, come to me. Come to me. I want to give you peace." And I use this, you know, this peace. For everything in my life, everything, everything that happens, everything that, that happens to me, I take to God. And He says, Cast your care onto me because I care for you. Right? Don't take care, cast your care. As soon as you feel that the peace is under attack, I say, I cast my care. This is not mine. I'm not going to receive this. 
I want your yoke that is soft and light on my shoulders, please. I'm not going to receive this. I'm not going to receive this fear. Fear is talking to me at the moment because I feel the, the wind is coming. But I'm rooted, I'm settled, and I'm standing on, on the Word of God for this situation. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for this message. Once again, I pray that you will just protect the message in the hearts. For this enemy wants to steal this message out of the hearts. He wants to come and snatch the seed. I pray if angels around the seed, around the hearts of those that heard this message. I pray for understanding to grow, revelation to grow. And that everyone that hears this message will be strengthened, will be lifted up, empowered. That the lights will go on for those that were in the dark. That the fire will be lit. Light the fire even in those that are, that, are, that are dim, that are lukewarm, I pray, Father, that you will turn up the fire so that we will become hot and warm again. So hot that the devil cannot touch us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.